Welcome back to What If I Was Reincarnated as Goku. I'm enjoying this series. Hope you enjoy it too. And I have an interesting idea for this part. With all that being said, let's get to it. We cut to me. I landed on Earth not too long after. Mostly everyone was dead though, except for Piccolo. I would get the Dragon Balls and wish for everyone who was killed by Frieza and his men to be brought back to life. This included Vegeta, as suddenly his body would stand up. He would walk towards me and say, why? Why bring me back? I would look at him and say, your sacrifice, your courage helped me win. You see, when you were fighting, when you were giving it your all, when you gave that speech about your race, it inspired me. And without you, I could have never achieved this, as suddenly my hair would turn yellow. Think of this as a thanks for helping me reach Super Saiyan. Now I'll help all of you reach it. They were all shocked, and Nappa and Radson really liked the idea of helping Vegeta reach Super Saiyan. And they didn't even know that was possible. More than one Super Saiyan sounded far-fetched. Even the idea of Super Saiyan sounds like a made-up legend, but it's real, apparently. We were all talking and discussing it, when suddenly Piccolo would grab my shoulder and say, Can I have a word with you? Piccolo would bring me back, and I would say, What's wrong? Piccolo would then look at me and say, Listen, Goku. I know that. You're not the real Goku. I don't know who you are or how you got that body, but spill it. Tell me right now, right here. I know for a fact you're not him. You've been acting differently ever since I fought you. But I didn't know Goku that well. I've heard stories about him from my dad, but I haven't really been around him that much. So I had no idea to tell him. But seeing you change, seeing how you act, seeing how you... How you talk it's not goku who the hell are you i would sigh and look at him and say i'm goku now listen you may not believe me but there's a world beyond this one a world where no one has powers like this i died and i woke up in goku's body piccolo would look at me that story sounded asinine and made up but it was true what kind of world doesn't have key what a pathetic excuse for a planet Piccolo then looked at me as I looked up at him, and to be honest, it may be selfish that I took his body, that I took his life, and I don't know where he is. Maybe he has my old pathetic life, but I'm happy, because I was a nobody on that world, but now I'm Goku. Now I'm the hero, and now I can actually do something. Piccolo would look at me and nod, as then I had an idea. As I looked and said, wait here, as I started to fly off. What the hell are you doing, Piccolo said. I'd look at him and say, fixing something before it starts, as I flew off. I flew straight to Capsule Corp. I knew the Android Saga was coming, and it would be fun to fight them all. But to be honest, I already got Nappa and Raditz and Vegeta, and I could teach them how to turn Super Saiyan. So, that will be enough fun as I can have. Besides, if Cell comes back and there's no one to absorb, he can't really win. And I, since I haven't really been training with Gohan or he hasn't been fighting nearly as much, he's not nearly as strong as he was in the original series. So I don't even know if I could coach him into beating Cell. So just to get all those thoughts out of the way, I decided to do an un goku move and just get rid of them now. As I got the Dragon Radar and slowly got all the Dragon Balls, I would then wish to know where Dr. Dro's lab was. As Shinron told me, I would fly over there and blow up everything. As I blew it all up, Dr. Jiro would be behind me and say, what the hell did you do? I didn't even get to finish making any androids. Ugh! Goku, how did you know? I would look at him and say, simple. You're not as smart as you believe yourself to be. You left evidence, Dr. Jiro. You really think that Capsule Corp wouldn't be after anyone like you? Any old Red Ribbon Army scientist? We've been searching for you for a while, but you got clumsy. You kidnapping those teenagers made it easy for us to find you. And now, you're dead. And then I realized, oh shit. Was 17 and 18 in that lab when I blew it up? Are they dead? Did I do that? I didn't really think about that when I blew it up. Dr. Joe looked at me and said, you, you, you knew, but how? They weren't even in the lab yet. They were in the basement of the lab. How could you have seen them? I left no trace behind. I made it look like a, they died in an accident. How did you figure all this out? I refuse to believe a half wit like you figured it out. I then looked at him and smirked and said, the old Goku is gone. It's the new one. I didn't want to tell him I just wished he knew where he was. I wanted to spook him, make him feel dumb. After all, a smart man like him 
The greatest insult you can do is insult his intelligence. Dr. Drew would then charge at me as I turned into a Super Saiyan and hit him to the floor. I then began to beat him up. Dr. Drew was surprised. He's never heard of this. He's never felt this power before. A Super Saiyan. He's never could have dreamed of this. Dr. Jarrell started to bleed. His arm broke as he needed to think of something fast. Suddenly, he would grab my neck and laugh. You might have gotten to jump on me, Goku. I am not going to lie, but that doesn't matter. You will die right here, right now. <laughs> he started to laugh. I looked at him and said, you're an android now, right? Dr. Jarrell would say, yes. I gave myself an android body. Why? Are you scared of it? I would smirk and say, tell me. Do you androids feel fear? Dr. Joe would say, what? As I jumped up and kicked him as hard as I could, knocking off his arm as it still attached to me. Then I hit him with a cummy cummy haw, destroying him. As I would go in and put out the fire and save, well, Lapis and Zazuli, since they're not 17 and 18 yet. As they would thank me, they would run off. And I could destroy Baby Cell, but I had another idea. I took his embryo and brought it to Capsule Corp. Bowen wasn't too happy, but I told her to try to make him perfect without, you know, having to absorb anybody. And to maybe make him good? I don't know. Masako did this in a what if, so why can't I? I thought to myself, this would be perfect, a good guy sell. As then I flew away. I'm, I'm sure that Boma could reprogram him. Maybe you can make him good and I can fight him. This would be super excited. As I flew down, I would try to teach the rest how to turn Super Saiyan without luck. Vegeta would get mad and go off on his own. So would Nappa, but me and Raz would keep on training. As I would try to turn him into one. As the days passed, they turned into weeks. Eventually, King Cold would arrive, just like in canon. As King Cold landed, his soldiers came out. And I was getting ready to fight. But then... Just as I hoped, future Trunks would show up. But then, I realized something. Something was off about him. As he started to lick his lips. It's been a while since I got to fight. Get, get, get. This will be interesting. King Cold's forces surrounded future Trunks. And suddenly, he chopped them all up into pieces. As he started to laugh. God, I missed this. This wasn't like Trunks at all. Could I have changed the timeline that much? Or is this someone else who got reincarnated? As all of King Code's forces fell to the floor, laying there lifeless, chopped in half. They looked, he looked up right at Trunks and said, Who are you? Trunks would smirk as he turned yellow. I am the legendary Super Saiyan. I am the man of violence. I am the man of suffering. And I am the one who's going to kill you. King Code would then charge at Trunks and Trunks would charge at him and they would start to battle. But Trunks was holding back just to have fun. He was playing with King Cold. As he enjoyed fighting him. As he enjoyed torturing him. As they fought, King Cold would get sliced up bit by bit, piece by piece, as the blood started to hit the floor. King Cold looked at him. As suddenly, Trunks would grab one of his horns and rip it off of him. As he fell to the floor and began to bleed, King Cold said, Mercy, mercy, please, please. I'll give you a planet, a solar system. Trunks then laughed and said, I don't want anything like that. The only thing I want is bloodshed. <laughs> As then he blew him up. Since they weren't waiting for me, I was the only one there since I knew King Cole would show up there. I looked in shock. This wasn't Trucks. I got ready to fight. As he walked up to me, he then smirked and said, Oh, what? what's the matter? He threw me some pills. Here, I need you to get better so you can fight me. I looked at him and said, Who are you? Isn't it obvious? I was a great serial killer, or would have been, if I didn't get caught after killing the second person, I was going to become the next Jeffrey Dahmer. Everyone in the world would have heard of my beautiful, beautiful art. Oh my god. I would have been famous. Everyone would have talked about me. Documentaries, people, the news, social media. I would have been everywhere. But then, it happened. Some jogger was jogging late night. Who jogs at 3 a.m. anyway? And saw me hide the body. This is bullshit. But on death row, I demanded that I watch something while I had my last meal. The three days before I died, I watched Dragon Ball Z nonstop. I didn't even sleep. And I learned so much about the characters. First time watching it too. But don't worry, I'm a quick learner. Then when I was executed, I woke up in Future Trunks' body. 
I was ecstatic to have these powers. However, I was just a little kid when I got this body. And the androids were terrorizing people. And they didn't even do it right. They didn't enjoy their suffering. They didn't make art out of their bodies. They didn't savor it. They just blew them up like they were nothing. So wasteful. I'm not like that. I savor every kill I have. He said as he smirked. Mm -hmm. And I want to savor you. I want to kill you and make you into art. You'll be my masterpiece. I looked up at him as I turned to a Super Saiyan. As I said, shut the hell up, you creepy. But then, Trunks turned Super Saiyan Grade 2 and punched me straight in the chest. As I fell down, began to cough up blood. He looked at me and said, I want a challenge. How about I'll show up the same time the androids did? On the same island, too. He would then tell me the coordinates as he threw me pills. Get better, Goku. Or whatever your real name is. My real name was Jack. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. Trunks Jack, the entire world would see my beautiful art and you'll be my masterpiece. Goodbye. As suddenly he left. It seemed like there'll be a new threat and this threat wasn't Cell. It wasn't the androids. It was actually Trunks. Ironically, the one sent to protect us was now the biggest threat. And that was going to leave things up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what you think of this series so down in the comments below. I wanted to bring back someone else, have them be reincarnated, but... Have them be kind of messed up. And have Trunks be a villain is unique. Since I could just stop the androids if I wanted to. So why not bring in a new villain? Make Trunks the villain. Or Jack. Whatever you want to call him. Anyway. Hope you enjoy this series. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, hope Jack doesn't turn you into beautiful art. Goodbye.